Is the Simpsons predicting the rapture? I was on X.com the other day and I was looking at the trending hashtags. And one of the trending hashtags was the rapture. So obviously as a pastor and as a Christian, I was interested to see what people were talking about. And it was amazing to see that the thing that was trending was a clip from the show, The Simpsons. And The Simpsons, I guess, you know, in that episode, they were predicting or at least discussing the rapture. The rapture was like the main point of the episode. Now, this is really interesting to me because The Simpsons has a history of predicting things and having, whether it's by accident or whether there's some sort of conspiracy behind it, kind of having predictive programming in their episodes and then those things come to pass. I'll show you a couple of examples here. So in uh, this episode, it looks like season four, episode 21 called Marge and Chains. People are looking at this episode and they're saying that this was uh, somehow predictive of the COVID-19 pandemic that happened a few years ago. In 1993, The Simpsons first aired the episode Marge and Chains, and the episode focused on Marge, charged with shoplifting and forced to serve prison time. The rest of Springfield caught the Osaka flu after a shipment of products reached Springfield. Osaka flu caused a similar pandemic in uh, to the COVID-19 pandemic. The Osaka flu, obviously in the show, originated from a different country before it made its way to the U.S., in addition, the episode didn't have a treatment immediately available, and the doctor of the episode recommended the patients get some bed rest, similar to how the scientists were still testing out their vaccine to prevent the COVID-19 virus. And then probably the most famous example, oh, this one's kind of interesting, in 2016, look at this picture, The Simpsons put out an episode that where, you know, it was almost like this predictive programming for the Apple Vision Pro, which a lot of you know just came out this year in 2024 and then probably the most famous example is predicting in 2000 the trump presidency if you remember this is like an exact exact picture of what it looked like when donald trump was going down the golden escalator uh, when he announced his uh his candidacy so anywho this clip that i'm about to show you from the simpsons regarding the rapture is not a new clip this was from i believe it was from 2005 from this episode called thank god it's doomsday but i do think it's interesting because you have all these clips from the simpson simpsons that are airing well before these events occur and it makes people wonder do the simpsons have some sort of divine revelation i'm i'm not going to go as far to say that but what i do want to show you is this clip from the rap from the uh, this this episode of the simpsons about the rapture and I want to share with you some scripture that show uh, how what they're saying and what they're depicting isn't totally far off from the truth of what the word of God says. So interesting nonetheless. And uh, I'll share with you my thoughts on the rapture shortly. But here, let me just play this clip for you and then we'll discuss. I wish you'd come to church with us, sweetheart. Church? I'd rather play golf on the holiest day of the week. But honey, with recent troubles in the Mideast and other ominous signs, the rapture could soon be upon us. The rapture? Easy there, Helen. Science has shown religion is just an old wives' tale. <gasps> I'm sorry, but the only thing I'm praying for is that you take it easy on our credit cards. <laughs> All right. First, in this clip right now, like you're having the wife share, hey, there's things hope happen in the Middle East. There's things happen in the world right now. This is a sign that Jesus is coming back. And what we're going to see in the scripture I'm going to share with you that is that she's not, she's not wrong. She's not wrong. It's one of the signs that Jesus actually told his disciples to pay attention to. And then you have the dad in this clip who's mocking Christianity, mocking religion, and saying that science has disproved religion, which a lot of atheists say, but there's literally zero proof that science has disproved religion. The existence of God. In fact, science continually points more and more to the, to the idea of an intelligent designer behind the universe. But I digress. Let's keep watching. Oh, Mr. Thompson. What if your wife finds out? It's modern times. Everyone's doing it. Where did my Christian limo driver go? My pious husband is missing. The baby I chose to have baptized is gone. Mr. Thompson, 
What's happening? It's the rapture, Shauna. The rapture. The virtuous have gone to heaven, and the rest of us have been left below. <gasps> left below? Where have I heard that before? It's the title of the movie. <gasps> it's everywhere! We were fools. And because we rejected God, tacitly accepting Satan, we must suffer through the apocalypse. I so, it's interesting because they're making like, they're, they're number one, they're making an allusion to the movie Left Behind with Nicolas Cage. Um, and that's why they call it Left Below. But what's interesting is these like little subtle comments about, you know, my Christian limo driver and my baby that was baptized gets raptured, which we'll talk too much about that in this video, but... Um. Yeah. Anywho, baby baptism is uh is not going to be what saves you and gets you to go to heaven. But what's interesting is he said, you know, we rejected God and tacitly accepted Satan. And so what's interesting is you could imagine that they're saying this is kind of like a punch to Christianity that oh, just because we're rejecting God doesn't mean that we're like pro pro the devil. When the Bible actually says the exact opposite, you're either a child of God through faith in what Jesus did, adopting us into the family of God, or you remain a child of the devil. You remain in the kingdom of darkness. So you either accept Jesus or you do accept Satan, whether you're, uh, you're, you know, explicitly declaring your allegiance to him or not. There's no fence. There's no in between. You're either in the kingdom of light, which is ruled by Jesus, or you're in the kingdom of darkness. Be accepting Satan, we must suffer through the apocalypse. I thought all religions were a path to God. I was wrong. It's true. Why did I put my faith in science and technology? It's true. Why do people do it? Oh, why did I choose to be gay? Oh, this movie will haunt me for the rest of my life. And they're going to throw that last one in there to uh, <laughs> to try and make Christians look like the, the bigots and the hateful people for people who choose the lifestyle that they choose, which is still not the point of this video. And if you're in that place, Jesus can transform you and change your life too, um, the same way that he did for me. But here's what I want to share. I'm going to share with you what the rapture actually is. Some of you are like, what the heck are they talking about? Basically, there's a lot of text in scripture that points to an event that is going to occur in the end times, meaning now, before the tribulation. Some people would say it's going to happen after the tribulation. Some of you are like, what the heck is the tribulation? This is, you're going to probably, we're going to see a wildfire of comments from people who uh, believe different things about the rapture. So feel free to put what you want in the comments about that. But ultimately, this is what the rapture is. The word rapture is not actually explicitly in the Bible. The way the reason why we get the word rapture though is from a Latin word called raptus or I think the 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 actual word harpazo is the Greek which is a seizing or a kidnapping or like a carrying off or a violent tearing away. And this is something that Jesus himself actually talked about. I'm going to show you in Matthew chapter 24 go to the New King James version. Jesus talks about this event that's going to occur. Let's see where. Here, here's a great example. Matthew 24, verse 36. This is Jesus speaking. He says, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the son of man be. For as in the days before the flood, if you remember the story of Noah and the flood, God was so disgusted by how humans rejected him and went after their own sinful desires that he allowed the entire world to be flooded out of judgment, to cleanse the world from all of the sin. Noah and his family were the only ones who were righteous by faith. And so he basically said, we're starting this thing over. So for as in the days before the flood that killed everybody in the Old Testament, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, which is interesting because you have this picture from this, from this uh, clip, from this episode. And look at what this guy's doing. I mean, they're, you know, they're living life as normal. He's making a joke about his wife buying all of this stuff. And then what's this guy doing? This guy's living as if God isn't real. 
This guy is living in such a way where he's cheating on his wife and, and as if there's no consequence to, to the way that he's going to live, right? And that's exactly how the people in Noah's day lived. And that's exactly how people today are living. People are living with this idea of, well, God hasn't judged the earth. And so blah, blah, blah. He's probably not real. We don't need to take his word seriously. This is exactly what Jesus warned about, that people would go about as business as usual, and then they would be uh, they would be devastatingly proven wrong when Jesus returns. And did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field, and one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, here's the key, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready for the son of man is coming at an hour you do not expect. So, Is the Simpsons going to be able to tell us when the rapture is going to happen? No, because nobody will know. Not even the Son of Man knows. Only the Father knows when he's going to send his son Jesus to come and rapture the church and rescue us before the tribulation, this this, uh, seven-year period of judgment that God is going to pour out on the earth and in which we'll find the Antichrist is going to be, is going to rise up uh, at that three and a half year mark as well. But this is what I want you to pay attention to because you might be thinking, well, how are we going to know when Jesus is about to come? Jesus himself said, this is how you're going to know that I am on my way and I'm going to rapture my church and rescue them from the judgment, which, by the way, is exactly what happened with Noah. You see, Noah, the only righteous person in that day, was spared because he got into the ark. Jesus also talks about Lot. Lot was a guy who was, he really was kind of a foolish guy, but he went into this place called Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah was also a sin-filled place. And God rescued Lot from Sodom and Gomorrah before he destroyed that city with fire and brimstone from heaven. So you see this pattern where Jesus is saying that it's going to be like the days of Noah, and it's going to be like the days of Lot. And in both of those circumstances, God rescued Noah, God rescued Lot, and God has a plan to rescue his church before the judgment that is going to come in Jesus' name. So watch this. How are we going to know? And Jesus answered them and said, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. Are you familiar with a lot of wars and rumors of wars happening in the world right now? Jesus said that these would increase before he comes. And when we see these things happening in the world, these are signs for us that Jesus is about to come back and rapture the church. See that you're not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences. Anybody remember the pestilence of 2020 and earthquakes in various places? All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Do you feel that right now? Do you feel the animosity towards uh, Christianity increasing? And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, do you see lawlessness abounding in the world? We don't even know what what genders God created. We so how like we we can't even follow the basic law of biology of anatomy, and much more these these other laws of shoplifting and all sorts of craziness and because of lawlessness the love of many will grow cold right but he who endures to the end shall be saved amen and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come so what's jesus's challenge to you and to me you and i need to take the word of god seriously We're not going to take the word of Homer Simpson seriously. We're going to take the word of the word of God seriously. And and we're going to listen to, we're going to listen to what has to say about paying attention to the times, paying attention to what's happening in the world right now, not mocking the things of God, not mocking Christianity, not mocking the word that Jesus spoke, 
but coming before it with reverence and saying, God, I got to make sure that I'm right, right with you. If that day were to come where there's a snatching away, where every person who is filled with the Holy Spirit, who is born again, who is bought by the blood of Jesus is removed from planet earth, what's going to happen? The Bible says in second Thessalonians that the only reason why the antichrist has not been revealed is because he who restrains him has not been removed. He with a capital H that he refers to the Holy spirit and the Holy spirit lives inside of the believer of Jesus Christ. So how is the Holy spirit going to be removed from the earth? The Holy spirit will be removed when the church of Jesus Christ is removed in the rapture, thus allowing evil to have its reign on the planet. And let me tell you, you do not want to be on planet earth when that happens. I want to encourage you get right before God, get a relationship with God going, repent of your sin, confess your sin, come to him and ask for forgiveness. And Jesus Christ, the sinless, blameless lamb of God who died on a cross 2000 years ago, who knew no sin, but became that curse of sin that you might receive the righteousness of God through him. He wants to forgive you. He wants to change your life. He wants to make you a new creation. He wants to take away all of your shame and condemnation and guilt. And he wants to give you a future in him. Give your life to Jesus. You're going to see at the end of this video, I have another video about how, how do you actually become right before God? How do you ensure your eternal destination that you will spend all of eternity with God in heaven and not in hell and torment, receiving the punishment for your sin and my sin that we frankly deserve. I want you to watch that video. If you're curious about more, I have another video explaining more about the signs of the times. I'd love for you to check that out as well. Otherwise have at it in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think. I do believe it's interesting that God will use all things, even the things of the, uh, the, the world of entertainment to get people's attention and to get them thinking about the truth that will set them free. Let me know what you think in the comments. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.